Welcome everybody to the big blue biosphere mural dedication time. You are so welcome to go get some pizza. There will be some beverages here in a short while. Uh, there's some solidarity tea right here. Come <laughs> over here and sit down. I have just a little bit of informal presentations, but we have some guests here who we want to hear from. So make your way over here and we'll get started. Thank you. It's Joni Kleban, who has been leading our art projects for, gosh, I don't know how many years now. And I've asked her to say a few words about our process and about uh, this project and extend my heartfelt thanks for all the work that you've done to make what we do so beautiful and so compelling. Joni Kleban. We do art to create change. And um, this mural is an amazing manifestation of that project. My feeling in the moment is that it's a really divisive time in our nation, in our country, and when we can focus on the art and the beauty that we bring in here, on the amazing history and science that's behind these images on the mural, the colors, the creation, it's just, it's just been an incredible evolution. Glad that we're here. And let me give up the mic, which is not my best focus, and have a statement. Camacho, Stephen City. Hello, thank you for everyone being here. It's a time, it was my first time to acknowledge the land and the Kalapuya. Uh, one of the words a friend told me, Tikam, is biosphere for the nor northern Paiute. I also want to acknowledge all the people in Eugene that I have a deep respect for. Uh, your constant work for peace, the earth, climate change, and activism makes this community wonderful. Uh, throughout all my years, especially the cold winters since I, since, since I was born, since I've been through school, so many people have been working hard to make this home an inspiring place. I am very fortunate to be the artist of this project, uh, to be supported, to travel, to explore the world, and to spread my artwork is your greatest gift to me and to the community. When I return to Eugene, I always feel at home, and it is one of the best places to live and to work on Earth. Thank you all who have persevered to make this a better place, more progressive, and for celebrating life on Earth sustainably. Uh, to speak about this mural in five minutes is a bit overwhelming. Large art projects like these are built from a long series of stories and experiences so I'm hopeful to be able to talk to you here today and later anytime as we grow that culture. What excites me most about my role as a muralist is being here, painting on site and making this urban site uh, a niche. And I get to be in harmony with the local neighbors and flora and fauna, whether it's moss and sparrows. Ever since I was 17, when I first painted my first mural at the YMCA, I've been blessed by the people who walk by my work while I'm working and express their gratitude to me and to the people who I'm working with, my volunteers and my collaborators. Uh, nine years ago, I painted a mural underneath these blue layers with our children's trust. And there's a small vestige of one of the children hidden in the continent. I would like to thank Paul Moore, the owner of Arriving by Bike, for understanding my creative process and the patience to have this project completed. <laughs> this blue arch is inspiring me now to find other opportunities to create a similar 
style earth mural, perhaps where you can stand underneath the curvature of the earth and hopefully show another different perspective that would help spark people to see the, the earth and to care. I think I create art from my affinity with chaos and it's my interactions with friends that help me find order in my work it's through their remarks and input I've been able to make this painting the best I can through this collective vision its simplicity and objective composition just this blue arch allows us to have a common ground seeing it experienced by all of us and perhaps that simplicity can help more people be able to think more deeply about protecting the biosphere. People ask me what I paint. I often say I paint animals, ecosystems, and how society fits within it. The reason the animals here are painted as subtly as possible is because I wanted the, the earth, the planet, to appear as real as possible and let the people find the animals and also find their own meaning in my work. Amazing. Now I would like to, for you to hear from my collaborator and mother, Kara Stephenson. Gracias. Well, hi everyone, I'm Kara and thanks for coming out here today. Um, uh, oh, and thank you, first, 350 Eugene, for the opportunity to create this mural with Esteban and other young artists who helped us. Um, Clover, Eva, Henry, I don't think they're here today, but there were other young artists. And I want to start telling just a quick story about our process from painting in the summer. So I don't know, I don't know about you, but for me, one of the hardest things about living in this country in recent years is is the rampant cynicism and like the cynical view that Americans don't care about the big issues like climate change and the suffering of others. I have always hated being spoken about and lumped into groups like that, the group of Americans that don't care. So that's why painting on this mural meant so much to me in the process because every day we painted here People I had never seen before or since passed by honking their horns and waving their support, showing us they care. Sometimes people walking stopped to tell us how much they loved it, some with tears in their eyes. And then there were others who made us laugh uh, when they said things like, oh cool, what is it? <laughs> I love that one actually now. It's a good question because there's a lot of going on up here, right? Um, so briefly, just for fun, I'll answer. What is it? So this is a partial view of Earth as seen from space. So we're looking at Alaska and the coastline of Canada coming all the way down to Oregon, uh, the big blue Pacific Ocean and the bright band of blue that encircles the edge of the planet. Our atmosphere blending in with the biosphere protecting us. It's an image of our home as imagined and seen from far away, an image of where we are right here, right now. We are here in the biosphere with the other life forms that make our lives possible. But what's up with the polar bear and the big cat looking down, the runner, the translations? You may be wondering, what do they all mean? Well, OK, that's the more symbolic part of the mural, and it's probably impossible to explain it in just two minutes. So, so there are descriptions, written descriptions of the images right over there on that, that whiteboard. Um, but briefly, the, the images are an effort to engage with the social and the emotional nature of the climate crisis. So the, the climate challenges demand our greatest effort now, our utmost. Like the kind of effort you sometimes see in great athletes striving to win a marathon, that kind of intensity we need. 
The world languages on the mural are a gesture to the fact that we are a global community and we need to work together better with the nations around the world. The eyes of the animal looking down from, from within the aurora borealis, that, their eyes, that's an emotional appeal. Perhaps you could say a moral appeal. What about our lives, they ask. What about your own? What about the future of the earth? Do you care? Do we care? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we care. And, uh, and what will you do? Last, last paragraph here. So finally, we worked hard as Stavon, especially with his skill and vision, to make the mural beautiful. Um, to make the mural beautiful despite the threatening nature of the crisis we face. Because beauty has the possibility to touch our hearts and inspire us in ways that reason sometimes cannot. I like philosophy, and uh, I just read a little book called On Beauty and Being Just by Elaine Scarry. She describes the power of beauty on us this way. When we come upon beautiful things, they act like small tears in the surface of the world that pull us through into some vaster kind of space. The space, the inner space, where longings for other good things like truth, equality, and justice also reside in us and well up sometimes. So the mural is an effort to echo that call to create beauty that asks us to remember who we are, who we really are, to re-engage with new purpose and to do our utmost to protect life on earth. There are many Americans, young and old, who already do this. And I am grateful to have met many of them in the folks who work and volunteer with 350 UG. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Themselves. I mean, that was really amazing. So now we are here in a position where we can do a little Q&A. I didn't prepare any questions, but hello out there. If there are any questions, because we didn't, we asked them not to go into great detail about all of the elements because they are so numerous and so interesting and engaging. But I want um, Esteban to definitely, yeah, fill some questions here. Can I let you do that? Yeah. Okay. I have a basic question. I have no answer, but others might want to know, where is Eugene on the mural? Oh, there's a, you know, the picnic table? That is the, there's a dot, and you have to find it. <laughs> that seemed a little bit like a trick question, but it's really, really there, and it's my favorite part of the mural, even though everything else was so amazing. Other questions? Does everybody see the Aurora Borealis? That stands out really good when you're farther away. And I don't know if you knew that the, the words down at the end sort of are luminescent in the evening. So uh, Esteban doesn't usually put words. He doesn't need words on his art. But we said, well, we like words, and we think people will read words. And so we had an agreement. And we think it came out really beautifully there. So yeah, are there questions about the runners and the small animals or the technique that is really interesting that he uh, employed? Yeah, and then you stop. I'll speak a bit about the animals. The The polar bear is an icon of the Arctic and climate. And so the animal next to the polar bear is a seal, which is, they are intricately dependent on each other. And along those lines, I, I felt rather than f depicting local species of Oregon, I needed to be a little bit more pertinent to the northern hemisphere. And the narwhal is of the northern oceans. But that tusk, that unicorn element, it makes it so mystical. It made me want to, because I, I had a, visions of putting so many constellations into this. So the, the, the tusk of the narwhal then gets mirrored with the antlers of the deer or the elk, whatever you think it is. And 
at the at the end, I put the Jaguar as. I, I, I could not put Costa Rica, where I was born, on this earth. It was not suitable. But then I saw that jaguars had an a extensive range, almost to the nor almost to the Arctic, and it's looking towards Willamette Street. It's looking towards the south. So. <laughs> So I, 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 I wrote biosphere in Icelandic, which is super faint, the and then in Greek and Russian, and I can't see maybe Spanish and German, English. Biologia is Swahili, then a really uh, both the Hindi and the Arabic come next, and I had people come to me and help me make them more. I had messed up on the Hindu. I had written it phonetically, not the way it, the meaning of uh, biosphere is written in Hindi. So, how, yeah, how 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 good to have that input from from someone who goes to the gym. <laughs> and then there's Thai and Korean and both Chinese and Japanese. Yeah, tree. I'm really curious how much this, like, is the whole thing planned out ahead? Like, how small Earth that you do the big version? Does it change? Before I planned the Earth, I was going to have this massive bicycle tire. And then I went over to the parking lot and I projected my projector well, with, the, with the idea of the Earth. So I had traced the curvature of the Earth and I knew that I wanted to use, I wanted to get that gradient. So I had to use airbrushes or not spray paint but various ways of getting these smooth gradations and then uh, yeah but it was a fun tech technically I was able to play around with sprayers and and lower the pressure on the airbrush to get the paint to just kind of splatter and get the Milky Way effect as much as I and try to also keep the piece breathable so that not oversaturated. So did other elements get added later as you kind of thought of it? Or was this kind of along the way? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it was, it's open. It's the, the planet. So it, it can take whatever I could have painted on it. But I also wanted it to, to, to keep it as blue as possible. I felt that in Eugene I wanted a blue mural. So that's one of the... Is that you? The runner? The runner is from a poster that my father b made design in the set in the early 80s for one of the first Nike posters ever. And uh, we have this whole history with running. And so it's, it's, it could be me or him or Prefontaine or actually it's probably, yeah, Rudy Chapra. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, I just find it so impressive that this mural, you just have a big black canvas, you have all these kind of obstacles, but did that become part of the mural itself, is having different textures and windows and pipes as part of it? The curvature, the curvature of the earth was what inspired to use that design to try the, the incongruent wall together. If I was a different design with focus here and focus there, it would have just been broken up by the window. So I think that's why, again, I've been focusing on the simplicity of the earth that ties the whole mural. Because, yeah, this, this staircase and the windows and the, the top, but it, luckily it works. Thank you, everyone. Any other questions? OK. Yeah, thank you very, very much, everybody. Thank you, Esteban. Kara, I know you were trying to get your mom, Betsy, over here. Betsy. I want to say thank you to Esteban for making and having such talent that he shares with us by doing the art. So every time we go anywhere near here that we're driving, we look at it and we say, oh, 
look at that. You know, it's really, 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 really wonderful to have such wonderfully talented children and relatives and friends, 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 you guys out there too, for heaven's sake. So my mom, she, she got us started in this art activism business. When I was in kind, no, when I was in grade school, there's a picture of me smiling up at this really at this older older man, and I had this look on my face as if I'm looking at like the Pope. And it was it was um, oh no I'm forgetting his name it was Wayne Morris. It was because she she was organizing back in the 70s. So this is where it all started. My mom Betsy. Thank you, mom. Thank you, everybody. You came. We love you. We'll see you in the streets.